Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Sparks Toyota, and I'm checking out a 2019 Toyota Highlander in the limited platinum trim level. Now the platinum package includes many cosmetic and functional features, including the bird's eye view monitor, which is really cool with the cameras all around the vehicle. We'll check that out in detail later. So let's go ahead and get started. This Highlander is sitting on 245-55 Toyo tires, wrapped around 19-inch alloy wheels with a Chrome Tech smoked chrome cladding. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Celestial Silver Metallic, and the sun's shining right now, so let's go ahead and hopefully you can see what it looks like. Hopefully the camera will do it justice. So the grill has mostly a flat black, except for the chrome horizontal pieces there, accenting the width of the front of the vehicle. You also have a camera. This is part of that bird's eye view system. So the camera in the front, back, and on the side mirrors. It also has the adaptive cruise control and the sensor for that, the radar system, is behind the badge, which is a nice way of hiding it. Has an LED accent on the outside. The headlights are powered by halogen bulbs for your low beams in a projector tube, and high beams are in a reflector powered by halogens. Fog lights are powered by LEDs, and they're in a little focused housing. You can also see the front parking sensors right here next to the fog lights in the front. Looking at the profile of the vehicle, now with this particular color you can see the plastic around the wheel wells here. This black plastic around here and on the back. Also the smoked chrome is, is really nice looking. It doesn't pop out. It's not too gaudy looking or anything. You also have the chrome accent around all the glass, kind of solidifying the entire piece, making it look more sleek as if it's one solid piece. You also have, um, to accomplish that, the, the pillars there are also blacked out. Now the back portion has the privacy glass. The dealer did tint the front glass to kind of put, a, put that all together. And it also has a antenna in this back glass right in here, mounted. Now the handles are body colored, the upper portion of the side mirror is body colored. You also have the chrome on the top with the roof rails. And the little camera for the side mirror, you see, actually has those little pieces right here. <laughs> Those are really tiny, but um, on Toyotas and uh, Lexus, they have these little bumps on it. On the Here, I'll show you one here on the side. So right here. And that's to help with creating a little bit of turbulence behind the vehicle, or has something to do with uh, the, the aerodynamics. They call them vortex stabilizers. So you can decide whether that actually does anything or not. So this has a little camera under here, sort of like a GoPro, wide angle, and then it has a light right under here as well, approach light. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed to where you can keep it in your pocket and use the vehicle 100% without taking it out of your pocket. It does have some useful buttons here, lock and unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate, and a panic button. There's also a physical key on the inside if you need it. So let's go ahead and push that panic button. So it just basically beeps the horn, flashes the lights. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in your pocket, it could be in a bag. As long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of this door, you can lock the doors by placing your finger over the sensors that are indicated by these two little lines here. It'll lock the doors, they're on the top and bottom, see? They're on both the driver and the passenger. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle, it senses your key, it also senses your hand position and allows you access to the vehicle. You also have your physical key location here on the driver's side only. This vehicle is mostly clean, but you can see where the tire is slung up. A little bit of dirt here on the side of the door. Now, this door has a feature. You see, 
gonna go ahead and open it up that when it goes all the way down so it goes all the way down with a seal at the bottom as well and so that way that extra dirt that slung up from the tire doesn't get on the inside of the door jam so when you're getting in and out of the vehicle the dirt is not there so if you have clothing pants legs or skirt or dress or whatever it doesn't slide across that and get your clothes dirty getting in the vehicle it keeps all the dirt on the outside of the door some vehicles uh, have the door stop higher than the side of the vehicle that way when you open up the door there's all this dirt there so i think that's a great feature to have to have the door go all the way down and keep the dirt out of your way when you're entering and exiting the vehicle okay so here's the inside of the passenger side door soft touch surfaces here 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 around your arm then you have your hard touch surfaces down here and over here has a simulated wood grain with a metallic accent there matching the handle a little bit of different color right in here around your handle and this goes all the way through so you can wrap your hand around and get a good grip on the handle there and your storage pocket is at the bottom with the bottle holder has the Highlander badging on the seal plate and in, in the uh, threshold there. Power seat here for the passenger side. And it goes forward and back and then the tilt here. So the seats are leather and they have a little bit of a contrast stitching. It looks like in blue, which looks really nice. Now these are heated and ventilated seats. You can see the perforations there in the center portion. And you can see the seats are quite a ways off the floor. They make it feel like that chair feeling. And check out the leg room. Nice wide open space. You do have some tapering when you get down in this area, but still pretty good. Has a locking glove compartment. Smooth plastic on the inside. And this is fantastic. I've always liked this about the, uh, the Highlander is the storage area right in here for your driver and passenger. You can get in the vehicle and you can throw stuff in there. It's really easy to access and see. And just a, just a fantastic idea, I think. Then you have the wood grain here, soft touch dash, and then the metallic accents around the vents here and across the dash. This one has the panoramic sunroof, which is part of the platinum package as well. Massive sunroof, looks nice. So checking out the second and third rows. First of all, check out the door how wide it swings out. This helps out with getting in and out of the vehicle. It also goes all the way down. So that way it serves to keep the dirt out of the door jam there in the, uh, the threshold area, I mean. Similar styling as the front door. Now it does have the shade that lifts up on both doors and it goes down into the door like so to get out of your way. So soft touch features are just like the front around your arm and up in here. And then it has the wood grain, the metallic accent, and your bottles at the bottom, bottle holders. Wider handle here. Now this is not a pocket because you see it's open at the bottom. So if you put something here, it's going to fall out here. Depends on, depending on how big it is, I suppose. Threshold has a durable plastic place to step here when you're getting in and out of the third row specifically, basically. Okay, so back here is a heated leather seat as well perforated in the middle you have armrest and cup holders here in the center portion that you can get out of the way now it's a 60 40 split and what i did was i put the other side this side over here as far forward as it'll go and still latch in place and reclined it as far as it'll go just to give you an idea of the articulation of the seats here and how they separate 
completely flat floor, so there's no hump in the center to get in your way. Pockets on the back of both front seats. You have the AC power inverter at the bottom. And up here you have rear climate control, your heated seat controls. So that way you don't have to bug the driver and passenger to adjust the temperature. You can just do it here for yourself. And maybe you won't be so claustrophobic with this huge sunroof above you. Now the seats have two modes. One is a cargo mode. The other one is a access to third row mode, I suppose you can say. So accessing the third row, this is, you're able to reach this from the front or the back. So we could lift up on this and it kind of spoons the seat up to the front seats. So that way you can access the third row going through here. Now the cargo mode, let's go ahead and put the seat back, put it in place. So it has one and two, lift one, and now we lift two. Now the seat is folding down. Now we can move it forward and back a little bit uh, by using the latch in the very front. But if we fold down the uh, third row seat and this seat, we can add to our cargo space while still maintaining passenger space, notice. Uh, so that's your cargo mode. Now the third row seats, you're able to recline those and they have different articulations. I have them all the way back and all the way forward, one side all the way back, the other side all the way forward, just to kind of give you an idea of what it can do. And the seats are kind of low to the ground, so if you have long legs, your light knees are gonna be sticking up in the air. So this is where you wanna put the kids or the smaller people. It does have some cup holders, uh, tie downs there on the side. You also have the ability to put in a shade and it actually has the shade in the cargo space in the back, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, it has a little shark fin antenna here at the top center, body colored. Third brake light is at the top here, powered by LEDs. It also has a rear wiper. The glass opens independently from the tailgate, as, so that way you can access the trunk quickly and just grab a few things or whatever. Now the tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. Your backup camera is slightly offset. So it's right in there. Parking sensors across the back as well. And it has these chrome pieces around these reflectors down here, which is interesting. The exhaust is slightly visible back here. Now the turn, there's turn signal indicators on the side mirrors, which is nice. There's also a blind spot monitor system uh, indicators on the side mirrors. They are heated as well. Okay, so to open up the glass independently, you just push this button, it pops open, it releases it, and then you have to lift this up slightly and it goes up the rest of the way by itself. That way you can access, in case you want to just pile stuff up in here. And uh, if you do, if you open up the, the lift gate, then everything's going to fall out. Maybe that, that's what it's used for. Okay, so to open up the power lift gate, there's a button under here, or you can use the key, of course. We'll go ahead and push that. And it'll lift up for you. There's actually two buttons, a larger button and a smaller button. The smaller button is to lock the vehicle. So if you want to access the trunk, you can open it up, and then when you close it, you can lock it if you need to lock all the doors. There's some speakers here in the back in case you want to tailgate. JBL speakers, by the way. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, uh, this is your cargo space. There's a light here on the right side. You can put a net cargo uh, piece back here. There's some tie downs here as well as there. Now, 
this piece lifts up so you can access some more cargo space in here. And also you see the end of the shade there because that's where it's stored. It's stored under this compartment, under this door here. So you have your tools for your spare tire, a little bit more cargo space, and there's your shade. So you can put the shade in place. Uh, you will have to fold down the third row seats to utilize this, um, but there it is. Now folding the seats down adds to your cargo space like I mentioned. So this strap right here, just lift up on it. This is what you use to recline it as well. But we're gonna go ahead and put it down like so. So you can see we've added to our cargo space. Let's say we had a long box, but we still had passengers. Well, we can put the long box here and keep the passengers. Or we can fold down all the seats and have a wide open cargo space. To lower the power lift gate, you simply push this button or you can use the key and it'll close down for you. Now you notice this little black portion right here. This helps, makes the glass appear a little bit wider as it, and just kind of makes it a little bit cooler, I think. Now it has a locking fuel door. Let's go and push that button. And it's on the driver's side, which is convenient. And it has a traditional cap, tether, and a little place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, or just sit in the cup holder or whatever. Uh, you can start it, push the brake, and push this button. Oh. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat hooks in place in two places, keeping it in place while you're driving. Accelerator and brake pedal, foot rest here on the left side, and then right here is your foot actuated parking brake. Okay, so let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch slightly to the right of center. So there's your center line. That's a little bit to the right. Push up on it. And the hood's kind of heavy, so you got to be prepared for that. It does require a prop to hold it up. There's the prop. Swings up and goes right where that arrow is pointing. Underside of the hood is insulated. It also has a seal across the front. And then you have seals on the side here as well as in the back. So it's completely sealed up. This helps with airflow, noise, heat, dissipation, all that kind of stuff. Insulated firewall as well. And you notice that this top of the strut tires are right here. They're braced in with this, uh, basically part of the vehicle that stabilizes the front end. Here's your battery that's easy to get to. Some vehicles have them in some weird spot underneath the back seat and trunk and all that stuff. This Highlander is powered by the 3.5 liter dual overhead cam V6, pumping out 295 horsepower and is paired to an eight speed automatic transmission and it's able to tow up to 5,000 pounds. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger except for it has a few more buttons. So here at the top, it has two presets for your power seat here on the driver's side. All four windows are automatic, one touch up and down. Go pretty quick as well. Notice they slow down right before the end. Door lock controls, side mirror adjustments. You just pick a side and adjust it like a little joystick. Now the driver has a power seat, but it has a lot more options. It has a thigh extender, so you can push that out a little bit more. You have the ability to go up and down, forward and back, tilt, and a power lumbar adjustment. To the left of the steering column, you have some buttons. Uh, automatic high beams are here. You can turn that on or off. Same thing with a stop start. You can turn it off, default will be on. This is your bird's eye view. You can push that and I'll show you that on the screen. It looks awesome. Power lift gate, you can open it up here. You have a heated um, portion of the windshield that's just under the windshield wipers to keep them from sticking to the windshield when it's freezing. 
heat is steering wheel, parking sensors, and then there's nothing here. And then you have a little storage pocket here, put some change in or whatever. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you can lock in place with this lever. So the lever's right in here to the left. Push it down to release it, push it up to secure it. Okay, checking it out on the inside, sitting in the driver's seat. And you gotta check out my night video because this vehicle looks really nice at night. You search my channel for at night, Highlander, Toyota Highlander. Okay, so I have the seat all the way back and I have plenty of room. I could probably put, most likely I have to put the seat a little bit for, further forward to drive. Um, because it's a little bit, I'm six feet tall and it's just a little bit far back for me, I think. The footrest is perfect. Um, I probably could drive like this, but the knee and leg room is really good. Leather wrap steering wheel that's heated. Good thickness and it's soft to the touch as well. So here on the left side is your volume for your radio. Change through your audio tracks or radio stations here uh, mode so this would be your audio source voice recognition button and then you have your bluetooth controls you can answer and hang up once you pair your phone here on the right side your cruise control is down in here so you turn it on by pushing that button you set it by pulling it down resume by going up and cancel by pulling it in now it's not a normal cruise control. Once it's turned on, it's the adaptive cruise control. You have your lane departure system. You also have your adaptive cruise control with the radar system here. So it's gonna keep you at a set distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. No matter what your speed is, it'll slow you down and keep you at that set distance. And you can adjust that distance by pushing this button and cycling through these bars here and resting on the one you want. So these buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. Turn signals on the left, but it also has your headlight controls. So you have daytime running light off, automatic, parking, and headlights. Fog lights are controlled here. And here's your gauges, has a nice blue background. RPMs are there on the left side with your engine coolant temperature. On the right side is your speedometer with your fuel gauge and it has a little arrow next to the pump indicating what side the fuel door is on, which is nice. But here in this very center portion, we're gonna use these buttons here to cycle through and show you this is part of a uh, whole menu system. So you get lots of information here. So it's showing your outside temperature, your trip is letting you know that your blind spot monitor and parking sensors are turned on as well as your uh, road your lane departure alert system now it does have the steering assist so as you're driving if you let go of the steering wheel for whatever reason it's going to try to keep you in in your lane now this if you're holding the steering wheel it just kind of takes the fatigue out of turning the steering wheel so much especially just those micro movements um, so it's not a self-driving feature or anything like that but it does help out Okay, so scrolling down, so you can see we're in the information. And you see these little icons here at the top, across the top. We're on the I, so the information one. So it gives us a range and different information here as far as the um, economy and stuff. It also gives you a sway warning. So if you're swerving around on the road and, you know, it kind of monitors what you're doing and it might alert you and say, hey, you know, maybe it's time to take a, take a break. Scrolling to the right. We go to the next icon. This is your digital compass. Also gives you navigation information here as well once you have um, something set. So it'll give you some indicators there. What your radio is doing, showing here. You can actually now scroll through your stations um, if you want to, going up and down with the same buttons. Scrolling to the right, it's letting us know that the radar is ready and it, this is where we see where our, our distance is. like so all right and we got the stop start feature right here and it gives like a timer 
storage messages will show up here and settings will be right here. So you can, your lane departure alert, uh, your pre-collision system, you can turn all that, you can set these, you can also turn them on or off. Blind spot monitor system, stop start, language, units, we can all adjust all this stuff here. I also have a speed warning in here as well. And we go back to the information screen here, which has a blank screen right here. If you'd like just nothing there, that would be nice. And you don't have to go into all that stuff all the time. It's just there in case you want to look at it or need to look at it for whatever reason. So it has a digital clock here at the very top that's independent from the screen. So that way you know where to look. It's easy to focus on. You don't have to hunt for the, the, the clock on the screen or anything. And it's very easy to set. Okay, so here's your touch screen. It has soft touch buttons on either side as well as a volume and tune through the station knobs. Pretty traditional with that. It does have a CD player. And you could go into your audio, home apps. Right now we're on the, the home screen, which is a kind of a split between your phone. Right now it's showing the uh, easy speak volume and also turning it on and off in this spot. We could customize the screen and it has your, your map for your um, GPS. So, so when we push the home button, this is what's going to show now. Now the easy speak is basically projects your voice to the sound system as a driver. When you're trying to talk to somebody in the back, sometimes they can't hear you because you're facing the way and all with the road noise or whatever. <clears throat> so what happens is you turn this on, it's going to, as a microphone here in front, it'll just project your voice to the sound system to the people in the back. So that way you can have a conversation without hollering at them the whole time. <laughs> Okay, so let's push this audio. It's just a soft touch button, so you don't have to um, press hard, you just touch it. Um, so you have your presets here on the left side, shows your radio. You can change your source here by pushing the source button, or you can push the audio twice, it'll go into your different source. You have AM, FM, satellite radio, uh, also CD, USB, auxiliary inputs. Uh, those will illuminate when there's actually something there to, to read. And of course you have your Bluetooth audio as well. Go into your apps. Uh, this is the Intune system application. You put that on your cell phone and it opens up some more features. It's a proprietary type system similar to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it's uh, proprietary to Toyotas. This is where you can go in at specific things here. Navigation, and take a look at the map. Let's see if we can, can't really pinch zoom. We can put in a destination here. Uh, we can put in a specific address or we can have favorite, uh, favorites and um, you can go home, you can put it your your home address or whatever. So you start with a state, then you go to your city, then your address and it narrows it down for you. All right, we already saw the audio. Uh, once you pair your cell phone, you'll be able to go into there uh, to your, your phone book and recent calls and and um, all the different features for your phone to send and receive uh, calls. You can also do uh, messages here using your, your data from your cell phone. Uh, your economy information, this will show up here. It's kind of like a drive computer to see what kind of fuel economy you've been getting. And then you can go in your setup and customize whatever you want, turn on whatever you want, that kind of thing. You have another phone button on that side and change through your tracks on the right side as well. And you have a, a card in here for your, your map system. So if, when it's time to upgrade your navigation maps, uh, you simply just replace that card. Okay, so your climate control is down here. Now your four-way flashers are here, um, but the climate control, this controls, it's a, basically a tri-zone. So your driver, passenger, and rear. Uh, so your Temperature for your drivers here, temperature for your passengers here. You can sync those by pushing the sync button. Um, you can also adjust the rear um, by pushing the button and you can adjust that independently. So you have your front and rear defrosters. When you turn on your rear defrosters, your side heated side mirrors will also turn on. Fan speed, where you want the air to blow, all that. And your air conditioning, automatic, all those buttons there. Pretty straightforward and has a little uh, information screen to let you know what's going on and way, the way it's set now. There's that storage pocket. 
goes across with a couple dividers. So down in here you have a 12 volt power supply, two USB ports for charging, and then you have auxiliary and USB port inputs here. All right, so you have some buttons here. Uh, you have a snow mode, so this is kind of one of those things where it's going to take off a little bit easier, maybe uh, second gear or something like that. And then you have your traction control if you need to spin tires in case you're stuck or something, or if you just want to spin tires for whatever reason, uh, you can turn off your traction control. Cup holders with these little articulating arms to fill in the empty space for different size cups. Okay, so here's your shifter. And before I get into that, I want to show you something on the screen. So this is your the button over here uh, for the bird's eye view. Let's go ahead and push that uh, before we mess with the shifter because this is pretty cool. It shows you what's around you using the cameras and stitching them together. So you can see where you're at, your immediate vicinity of the vehicle, and see what's going on from a bird's eye view, like it mentions. So you can go, let's go ahead and, um, well, if I put it in reverse, it's gonna change the view, but this is just giving you an idea of where you're at, uh, your starting point, I suppose. Now you can push this button here, and you can look at it more of a first person view around you. It's pretty neat. Now we can always replay that by pushing that. We can go ahead and do this. This gives you like you're hovering above the vehicle, looking at the vehicle and what's around you. And it's real time, like this is actually showing you what's on the ground. I'm actually in a dirt parking lot and that's actually the ground around me. Now the vehicle, of course, is simulated. So let's go ahead now and put it in reverse. So when I put it in reverse, you'll notice now we have the backup camera here with the active guidelines. We also have the bird's eye view on this side with the active guidelines, even the front tire trajectories are there when I turn the steering wheel. We can get a focus more on the backup camera with a wider view. We can change the uh, the guidelines there. More linear view. And then we can go back to the split view right here. All right, so now if we put it in drive and then we push the button over here now it gives us a front view okay and the around the car view so now we can see if we need to get close to something in the front we can push that button and get an idea uh, of what it looks like we can also turn on or off the the guidelines or whatever right now they're turned on letting us know that where the back and front tires are going to go so that's pretty neat so we move forward just so you can see that it's actually, you know, what's going on and how close it is. So you can see that little spot on the ground right there. You can also see it here. You can put it in the reverse and we can back up. And you see this is good for parking. This is close to getting to curbs, all that stuff. Now if you have a door open, <clears throat> You see it's going to change that view because the camera is on the side mirror. So if I, you know, opening up the door, it's going to move that camera and change the view. Okay, so there's neutral, drive, sport, and you can adjust, uh, change to the gear ratios manually like a ratchet shifter here. This is uh, useful for downshifting basically. So you have your heated and ventilated seat controls here. So this is your driver, that's your passenger. Right now I have the ventilation on. Can have, it has a three stage, then off, and then the same thing for the heat. Don't want the heat right now because it's a hot day. Okay, so here's your armrest. Soft to the touch. Not so soft here, but it's more soft in the middle. 
this opens up. So you have this, you just push down on it like so, and you're able to slide it down, push down on that, and slide this back. And then you have this tray that moves forward and back. You can also take this out if you want to. And then there's a portion at the very bottom for more junk that you can put in there, but it's really big. You also have a 12 volt power supply in there as well. This is gonna be the junk drawer of the vehicle. And you can close this up so you can keep all the mess out of sight. Okay, so the rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. You can turn that feature on and off here. It has some tap lights. You can turn them all on uh, right here or have them on with the door by having that on. These are for your sunroof, which we'll get to in just a minute. Your home link garage door opener controls are here. Emergency button there and place to put your shades and as a cushion on the inside Lift this up drop it there and you have a conversation mirror so you can keep an eye on the backseat drivers The visor has Light and a mirror It also is able to extend out and it's a cloth material. And there's your microphone for your easy speak. Okay, so looking at the, check out that sunroof. That is just massive. And it has a shade that blocks 100% of the light, which is nice. So we can move the shade. So right here, we just press and hold that for a second and it'll slide it back. We can vent it up, pull it down, or we can slide it back. Push it again, it goes a little bit further back. And we can close that and then we'll just do the shade. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. All right, so I have one seat down, one seat up, just to give you an idea of how much that makes an impact. So you have your, uh, your pillars in the far back, which get in the way a little bit, but overall there's lots of windows, lots of ways of looking around the vehicle, and there's a lot of technology with helping out. Uh, you have parking sensors, the backup camera, the bird's eye view camera, all that as well. Uh, blind spot monitor system all that in addition to the lots of glass to look out of so the visibility and the usability as far as um, you know backing up and, and parking and all that should not be a problem or lane changing for that matter all right so there you have it 2019 Toyota Highlander limited platinum thank you for watching thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach I don't work for them but they do allow me to show off their awesome vehicles, and I really appreciate that. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.